In this problem, we're going to show how an infinite number of very tiny CSTRs in series would require the same total volume to achieve a specified conversion as a PFR. And we're also going to show that in a way a PFR is also analogous to an infinite series of very tiny batch reactors. Okay, now as we've seen in an earlier screencast, the volume for a CSTR can be determined on a reciprocal rate plot reciprocal rate versus conversion if we're going to the same final conversion. If the volume of the CSTR is proportional to the area of the rectangle described by the reciprocal rate curve at that given conversion. So it's equal to the conversion times the reciprocal rate. Whereas the volume of the PFR required to achieve the same conversion is equal to the area under the curve that is uh, shaded with red lines. Now let's consider a case where we have a number of CSTRs in series. And what I've sketched here is what those first few tiny CSTRs would look like. And so we'd be determining the area of each of these rectangles and summing them up, uh, up to the final conversion if we had a lot of very small CSTRs. All right, again, the volume of each CSTR would be proportional to the area of each of these rectangles. And what can, we can see is that if we make those rectangles small enough, Right, that the sum of the areas of the rectangles are approximately equal to the area under the curve. And that's because we're making the rectangles small enough that the region above the curve becomes essentially negligible. And so I'm showing here the volume of an individual CSTR and then the total volume required of all the CSTRs would be equal to the sum of those individual ones. Then the last one might look something like what I've just drawn on the right. So a very thin little slice and what we're essentially applying here is very similar to the area under the curve where we're approximating that area using what's known as the trapezoidal rule. And in the limit that the CSTRs become infinitesimally small, then we will actually get an exact solution to the area under the curve, in which case the CSTR behaves like a PFR. And if we recall that when we originally did the material balance on a PFR, and we had some flow rate in of component A, and then we converted that to a lower flow rate out of component A. We did our material balance on an infinitesimal little slice of our reactor. And we did that because, as is shown to the right here, the concentration of A, and thus the reaction rate, would vary down the length of the reactor. And so in order to do that, we had to choose a very thin slice of the reactor across which we could assume that the variation in the concentration was negligible. So we take an infinitesimal slice and assume that it's perfectly mixed and therefore it behaves like a little CSTR in this region delta V. If we want we can look at this in terms of the material balance again for the PFR where the accumulation term is equal to zero and so we just need the N minus out plus generation terms for steady state behavior. We again treat this differential slice with the flow rate in at position V, flow rate out at V plus delta V. Using this we can write the balance this way for our N minus out plus generation is equal to zero. All right, and we get the general PFR form when we take the limit that delta V becomes infinitesimally small. But the form as it exists right here is basically the same material balance that we get for a CSTR. And then we see that basically what we do in this equation is we have to make the volume small enough that the reaction rate really doesn't vary across the length of the reactor. Therefore, we have an infinitesimally small, perfectly mixed volume. And again, if we take the limit as delta V approaches zero, then we can use the definition of a derivative to get the PFR equation. And so we see that if we have a single tiny CSTR that it's similar to the differential element we use to evaluate a PFR. And so if we have lots of those in series, then it's just like the integral across volume space for a PFR. All right, now let's take a look at the second part of the question. So looking at how a series of batch reactors are similar to a PFR. To see this, we're going to use the quantity of the space time, which is equal to the reactor volume, divided by the inlet volumetric flow rate of the feed. That gives us a characteristic time. It tells us basically at the feed conditions how long an individual molecule of fluid will spend inside the reactor. We'll assume for the purposes of this example that the volumetric flow rate is a constant. 
the inlet volumetric flow rate typically will be a constant. We can re-express this design equation for the PFR in terms of tau by doing a variable substitution. We get for the left-hand side of the equation the derivative that's shown here. Because the volumetric flow rate is constant, we were able to put that into the derivative that it initially started outside the derivative, and so the FA over V0 becomes a DCA d tau, and that's equal to the reaction rate. And if we remember, a constant volume batch reactor is defined by the material balance is DCA dt is equal to the negative reaction rate. Okay, so again what we've done is we've taken the PFR design equation, right, we've substituted in for the volume the quantity tau times volumetric flow rate. That allows us to re-express our design equation for the PFR above in terms of DCA d tau is equal to the negative reaction rate. We see for a constant volume batch reactor that DCA dt is equal to the negative reaction rate. And therefore, if we consider that space time for a PFR and the batch time would be similar quantities, then these design equations amount to the same thing. And so in other words, what you can think of PFR being is a series of batch reactors that are moving down the length of the reactor, All right, which makes sense that we have fluid that's entering at, at a some high concentration of A. We consider that we have a well-mixed vessel or a, a small infinitesimally uh, sized plug of fluid that enters the reactor and flows down the length of the reactor. And because we're assuming plug flow, then we can consider this little plug of fluid as being a simple batch reactor that's flowing from the inlet to the outlet and achieving a conversion according to the amount of time that it spends in the reactor. So in other words, the batch time is equal to the space time of the PFR. And so in this way we see that a PFR can be considered as an infinite number of infinitesimal CSTRs in series or as continuous flow of batch reactors that are flowing through a pipe 